This is my judicial cane. <laughs> If people are starting off, one of the main mistakes they make is they will buy a really thin whippy cane. They're difficult to be accurate with and they're easy to wrap, which means it comes around the side, which lands on lots of nerve endings and the tip, if it wraps, can cut in. This is a smoked dragon, so called because of its colour, and it's a dragon cane. This one is quite whippy, but it's still rigid, so it doesn't wrap as much. It's just a matter of, of positioning your feet. Canes like this, again, very rigid. This is my Regina. That is going to bruise. It won't cut, but it will bruise. I've bruised someone for six weeks with this. If you were new and had no equipment whatsoever, mm -hmm. where would you get your cane from? Do you want me to name a company? Sure. Jack's Vloggers, he's about the best. Stay away from people who try to tell you that dragon cane should cost a hundred pounds because they've got no nodules at the hitting end. As you can see, that's got one nodule there and one there. With Dragon Cane, they have very few. It doesn't matter where they are. And to charge that sort of money for a cane that has not got that nodule or that one, when it's simply the way he's cut it, is a rip-off. Little cane like that. Quite rigid. That's what I use for hand punishments. Bastinado, if I'm doing that on the feet, you have to be very careful because there are lots of little bones in the hands and the feet. So I use a light, quite rigid cane. It's shorter and that's all you need to do. This is my judicial cane. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm giggling. Half bark malacca, this one, but Mariana, something sort of 10 mil, 10 millimeters in diameter. This again is actually very dense, very heavy, but it can still wrap, not because it's very flexible, but just because of the weight of it can carry it round if I let it overhang too far. So, it, again, it, it's all learning. Now, this is my punishment cane. <laughs> I have two of them, that one and that one. That one came from a souk in Saudi Arabia where they are sold to people who want to beat their servants. Okay, both of them are about 10 millimetres in diameter. Both are dragon canes. They've got some give, but not too much, and they flipping hurt, and that's the idea. <laughs> They've got enough weight behind them to actually have an impact. Don't use bamboo, for goodness sake. It splits lengthwise, and it has sometimes has something in it that can cause infections. And bear in mind that wangy canes no give are a form of bamboo they also have horrible nodules on them that bruise so be very careful with them keep them away from central heating keep them away from dry heat don't soak them people like to weight the tip by standing it in water it's going to draw water up so far that's then going to sit inside the cane and rot it if you want a heavier cane, get a heavier cane. If you're making it tip heavy, you're also going to have uneven marking. Defeats the object as far as I'm concerned. All I do with my canes and some of these, for instance, that one, that one, and my judicial cane, they're about 20 years old. Wow. Yeah. 
once a year, maybe twice a year, I'll give them a very thin coat of boiled linseed oil. Make sure it's boiled. The raw linseed oil has lots of nasty things in it. On a, on a cloth or a rag, an old tea towel, I make sure that I rub the oil onto the tip and then all the way down the shaft. And that's it. That's all I do with them. The more you do, the more that means you can do, basically. Keep them out of water. If you get a cane that develops a kink, that one's got a slight one in it. Now what I would do with that is turn it over, put my thumb there at the bottom of the dip and just gently do that. Gently. And that will straighten it out. Sometimes they do curve quite badly or you'll get a kink in them, especially the rattans, which is another word for kubu. Just hang them on the shower rail on the outside of the shower curtain so that steam gets to them from a shower. Leave them overnight and just straighten it. That's all you have to do. But that's the only time that I allow any moisture and I never actually do that myself. Um, I just straighten them like that. It's simple. Even I can do it. How often do you break canes? Depends on the canes. <laughs> I did a demo and I had one of my canes and I was showing how flexible it was. <laughs> and I went and I bent it. I said, you've got lots of giving them snap. I said, and that's when you know you've bent them too far. <laughs> Threw that one to the side. <laughs> Normally it's because there can be a fault inside the cane. Can't see it, I'm not a mind reader. When I used to sell canes, occasionally one would break. So I'd just send them another one. They're quite resilient. I mean, a lot of those canes, I would say most of them, I've had more than 10 years. So it's just basic care, but keep them away from dry heat. If I get a new implement, I always have it tried out on me because how can I use it if I don't know the effects of it? I might buy a strap or a belt and think, oh, that fits in there in the order of things, only to find when I feel like, geez, um, it fits somewhere else. <laughs> so it, it's only right, it's part of my responsibility to make sure that I know exactly what I'm doing with my implements and to do that I have to know what they feel like psychologically as well as physically on occasion. Which is your favourite? I mean... <laughs> All of them! <laughs> I love Jack's stuff. He's great and his floggers and his handles. Oh God, yeah. Oh, I love the crisscross leather ones, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, Have you seen the handles on his floggers? Oh my God. Some of them. Yeah. God, it's so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I've had some of this stuff for years, it's lasted so long. Mm. 